Hello there, this is Brian with 7 and All Makes. Welcome back. We've got an interesting piece to show you today. Any guesses as to what that is? Well, maybe this is a four story apartment building. The Among Us characters are checking it out. They're checking out each unit, they're going through the different floors. Uh, looking at the different view from the highest floor, eh, it's a little bit too high for them. I think they're going to move on and check out the spaceship. Okay, well what is this piece? Well, let's see. Stack it up again. It could be a four-story car park. The cars are racing through the different levels, up to the top, back down again, and out. No, they're not interested in it either. Well, let's say you want to go on a trip and you've got your bag, and you want to take along your favorite book. Which pocket should you put it in? Will it make it there and back again in one piece? Or will Bilbo end up bent, battered, broken, and bruised? Oh, I suppose you could find some way to pack your favorite book. You could find a little baggie, but really, Mr. Baggins from Bag End in a plastic baggie. That just doesn't seem right now, does it? Well, what else could you do to find a safe way to transport your book without putting it in a bag? You might remember that a lot of your little books uh, that you have, your sets of books, come in a nice little slipcase cover, and that's a good way to protect books as they get transported or kept on shelves. So, here's a way to do it with a 3D printer. First of all, take your book and take some dimensions. What's the height of the book? What's the thickness of the book? So write those dimensions down and then add a couple millimeters in thickness. If you want to cover the whole book, then make sure you cover the width of it as well. Now I'd like to show you how to design a part in a CAD program that would allow you to make a slipcase cover for a book. Start out by making a sketch. What I'm showing here is Fusion 360, and that program is available free for hobbyist use, for non-commercial use. And make a sketch of the dimensions for your book based on the dimensions that you've taken. As you can see, the sketch now is showing the height and the width of the book, and just make sure that that's all correct based on what you measured for your book. Go to the Extrude mode, uh, where you want to push-pull the sketch and give it a thickness. And here it's going to go in one direction. And right now we're making kind of a mini slipcase cover. So it's going out 22 millimeters. And so it's just a big uh, rectangular block as it is now. And now we're going to shell out one side of it by clicking on that face and going to the Shell command and setting it for the thickness that you've designed or that you want in it. This is set at a two millimeter thickness. Okay, so we're taking a look at our part as we have it now. Looks pretty good uh, for what we want it to be, a way to just cover the end of the book and protect it. Now I'm going to choose the back face of this part as I want to create some cutouts in it. Uh, this will reduce the amount of material that's needed and also give it just a nice look. I'm creating some rectangles on the back face in the sketch feature command. I'm going to measure these and just create a nice uniform measurement. Uh, it can be anything that you want. I just set it here to 15 millimeters uh, wide and then uh, 20 millimeters tall. It can be whatever you want. And then I'm going to also check the dimensions and make sure that it's uniform spaced from the top to the bottom so that it looks nice when this prints out and just check also how far in the first one will start. Wanted to make sure that it looks good and looks uniform across here. You can adjust it and now we want to create a rectangular pattern. Uh, be before that we're going to take that sketch and again extrude it out by cutting the back of the slipcase cover. Uh, so we're just going to move it in the direction towards the part and create a cutout. Now we have our first hole. So 
Once we have this feature, take a look at it. Make sure that it looks good. It's what you're looking for. If it looks good, then you can keep on going and make more of them. Using the rectangular pattern feature, we are going to select this feature and then we're going to replicate it in the direction of the slipcase cover. So what we want to do now is to uh, show the direction and the arrow will come up. So now you can just click on this arrow and set it for the number of features that you want. I've set it for six. You could set it for however many you want. You can drag it across the part to the point where it looks uniformly spaced and you can move it forward or back as you can see. Once it looks good uh, with the shadow lines you can click OK and then that feature will be replicated across the part. You now have the six cutouts across the part. We'll take a look at it. Uh, rotate it around and see if this looks like what you would like to, it to look like. Again, you still can make adjustments as needed, but this is what I was going for was uh, a mini slipcase cover that would allow it to cover the end of the book. Here I'm clicking on the lines and the bottom right corner will show the length of those lines. I'm going to check these lines against my dimension to make sure that it's the height of the book, the thickness of the book, and it's uh, going in as far as I want it as far as coverage of the end of the book and will protect it. I now have saved my part as an STL file and imported it into my slicer program. I'm using Cura. There's a number of different programs that you can use. You can see that as it brought it into the program it's on its side and we're going to need to rotate it. It's not printable in this orientation. So uh, click on the part and then the make sure you get the arrows that allow it to be rotated and just rotate it 90 degrees so that it's sitting flush on the back like we have it like I'm showing it here. This way the walls will all print straight up and those rectangles will be right on the base on the glass plate and print out nicely. Uh, otherwise like I said uh, it won't print in that initial orientation now just adjust the settings for the line height that you want, the infill that you'd like to see, and when we slice this it shows that this part will take three and a quarter hours to print. Alright, and just go through a preview of the printing of the part. That's always a good check before uh, rushing off to your 3D printer. Take a look at the process that the extruder will go through in printing it. There's some adjustments that still can be made and it's better to do it now than later. So just running through the simulation of the extruder going through the different layers and seeing that this looks right, that it uh, is at the right settings that you want it to be at for your print. Well maybe you'd like to make a full slipcase cover, uh, one that covers the full length of the, the width of the book. So you can go back to your design and you can adjust what was that dimension for the extrusion length. Instead of the 22 millimeters, let's adjust it out to the full width of that book. So by going to uh, that dimension there, we now have uh, an extrusion that is going to cover the full width and you can see it just adjusts the original model. So everything's still in place, all of the rectangular cutouts. Just going to uh, move it through some orientations, make sure it's what I'm looking for. And by clicking on the lines here too, we can check the dimensions that it gives in the lower right hand corner. Uh, make sure nothing changed from what was our original uh, design of the part and the dimensions that we took from the book. Okay, I've brought the full-size slipcase cover into the slicer program. And again, it's coming in on its side, uh, similar to the orientation of the design. Okay, it's not printable in this orientation, so definitely don't send it to the printer yet. Uh, click on it and get the or, uh, uh, orange or the red circles that allow you to rotate it. Rotate it by 90 degrees 
and then that will bring it up to the glass base. The walls will all go vertical uh, in orientation and printing from the glass base and the rectangles will be there right on the uh, bed of the glass and it can print out in this orientation now. Uh, this will definitely change the printing time. You can see three hour, 13 hours and 45 minutes. So more than four times uh, the duration of the mini. So really it depends on how long you have to uh, allow it for printing. Again, take a look at the layers and the printing process for the extruder to go through and make sure it's all good, especially if it's going to be a longer print. Here's a couple pictures of some of the parts as they came off the printer. I did have to angle them to get them to be able to print on the bed of the Ender 3 version 2. And here's the part now able to fit on my book and protect the edge covers so that it can be packed safely in my backpack and it will make it there and back again in one piece. Uh, the nice thing is that it protects soft cover books and it also allows them to stand up. So maybe if you want to store them or display them, and if it's not a hardcover book, that's often hard for it to stand up and stay in position. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos, then hit subscribe. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.